Moving on, we have a question from Alexander. Valery Viktorovich, could you tell us a little more about the engineered state of Mexico and what it stands behind it? Trump's truth also plays its part in order to distract. I have tried to analyze it and got a certain impression that the global elite are transferring automobile manufacturing mostly to Mexico. On the one hand, doing so, they are suppressing Germany and destroying its stability in the field, and they are boosting Mexico on the other hand. Do I understand it correctly that they are solving several tasks by that. The first one is to give specialists an impulse and force them to move to the deserted cities of China. And the second one is to weaken Europe and make Islamic Caliphate come true. Sorry for interrupting. They both don't contradict each other. They are the same. Basically, that is the question. The point is the following. As we have already said, Europe is meant to be reformed. Euro-Atlantic Governance Concentration Center, there are two segments mostly, the UK and the USA, is meant to move its base to China. It doesn't mean that no one from Europe will move to China. Euro-Asian Governance Concentration Center, it is continental Europe itself, is meant to move its base to Iran. And that doesn't mean that someone from Euro-Atlantic coalition won't go to Iran. Actually, all this relocation is just out of necessity. It is like the Venetians and Genoese moved to Switzerland and Holland. Some Venetians and Genoese moved to Switzerland, while some Venetians and Genoese moved to Holland. But this being said, most Genoese moved to Holland and the British Isles, and most Venetians moved to Switzerland. Which reflected in the future flags of the UK, the Netherlands and Switzerland. Regarding Mexico, the real issue has nothing to do with Mexico, but the USA. All countries of Americas, both North and South, are engineered countries, totally engineered states. The engineered country of the USA was created as a tool, the international gendarme, to destroy everyone who wouldn't serve the master well enough, one way or another. Or to pursue an agenda of the global predictor in the form of international politics of the USA, which most people perceived as all oh, the USA is the subject of global politics. The USA has never been the subject of global politics. The USA has always been, from the very beginning, the tool to pursue a policy of global predictor. And the main control station has always been in the UK. It is still there. It is not completely transferred to China yet. Though some unit of the headquarters are successfully operating on the base of Hong Kong. The USA has never been the subject of global politics, and as a tool it had outlived its time by the end of the 20th century, when 5% of the global population consumes 50% of global energy resources and produces 40% of litter. It is absolutely outrageous role model for the whole planet Earth. Doing so, you can destroy all the resources, sink and litter, and proceed to living in human herds, surely having gone through the phase of post-technocratic society. How people using the achievements of civilized society 
weapons, for instance, will eat each other is depicted in American film Mad Max. So the USA were supposed to be reformed in the beginning of 2000s, following the Soviet Union. But also, the Soviet Union was demounted according to the plan, and it happened only six months before the fall of the USA and the Western world. So we saved them by our resources. Nevertheless, everything that followed then turned out to be out of global predictor's control. Russia happens to be a thing in itself. It turned out that conceptual power in Russia belongs to people, and such processes have started in Russia, that they were out of control of global governance. All these processes led to the situation when in 1996 Russia, the Soviet Union, must have been reassembled once again. In other words, pulled down in 1991 and reassembled in 1996, again on the basis of Marxism ideology. With the lead of Agitation Center Belarus, and Alexander Grigorievich Lukashenko is our bright Tsar, the founder of a new dynasty with the ideology of Marxism, Darxism. Alexander Lukashenko, so to say, still in the character. He still thinks he will succeed, and that is why he brings up Kolya as a successor to his throne. Well, what can you do? Alexander Lukashenko is a narrow-minded person, yet a foxy one. Reassembling of Soviet Union in 1996 didn't work out. Basically, that was the reason the USA were put on pause and nurtured with resources. It led to the situation when the USA elite felt almighty and, like a watchdog, broke loose and started biting its master, because they think that the parasitism of the American country elite in the world is eternal. They just need to keep on robbing everyone and living parasitically, thanks to that. But I repeat again, keeping American model of lifestyle, even only within the USA, is destruction of the planet in the near future. American country elite just have a look at their level of education. They're... Who is there? They don't realize it. They don't get it at all. And they think it will go on eternally. It won't. But the globalists realize that the game is over. Either you reorganize the United States now, or it will be too late. Thanks to the fact that Putin came to power in Russia, he has managed to stabilize Russia to a great extent during the last 20 years. Only 18 years are counted yet. Thus giving the global predictor an opportunity to move on to reforming the USA. This is the basis of the deal between Putin and global governance, to give a chance to make a maneuver to stabilize the governance processes on planet Earth, save the civilization on the planet. It's beneficial to everyone living on Earth. Putin gives the global predictor exactly this opportunity by his governance of Russia and the world. So the global predictor works on the reformation of the USA. But there are two possible options for the USA to be reformed. The first option is when all processes in the USA will be to a certain extent under control and will take course with cataclysms like the ones that happened when the Soviet Union came down. That means the civil war, the domestic social tension, the criminal mayhem are inevitable. However, it is one level of bloodshed, the degree of bloodiness of the future events. Despite Americans will have much rougher processes than we had during the destruction of the Soviet Union, it is still the lowest level of bloodiness. The second scenario is way much rougher. It implies that USA must be abandoned, having taken out the nuclear energetics. 
Having built the centers of resistance around the power plants, which will be maintained by air, by creating the centers of welfare and perimeter defense against those who will wander around the USA like Mad Max, the human masses will get the time to overeat themselves. It is a different level of bloodshed of future events. However, within both levels of bloodiness of future events, the global governance should be prepared for what is the usual way people behave when life becomes rough in certain area. As the phrase goes, fish looks for deeper water and man for better places to live. In 1990s, many of the people also left Russia, the Soviet Union, for some more flourishing places. Do you realize what is going to happen in the USA when the cataclysms start and they will be on a larger scale compared to the period of the Soviet Union destruction? And the mentality of the Americans is quite different from ours. No matter how hard it is, we stand and fight for our country. We maintain the infrastructure of the country. The Americans have nothing close to that in their genes. First they work in one place, then they find a job with $5 higher wage and move to another place. It is more profitable there. They are not involved in social relationships to the same extent as us. We have a traditional society, while they already have a libertarian one, after all. Their main values are homosexual values, and not like values of upbringing children or taking care of the elderly. And according to that, when Americans swarm into bright and flourishing places, it will be a huge strain for the bordering countries. So these countries should be prepared accordingly. Since Canada is to the north and its landscape allows to create a certain barrier, by the way, not many people will go there. In other words, it is possible, thanks to natural reasons, to hold in check those fleeing from uncontrolled crime, poverty and starvation, which will break out in the USA. Mexico, however, is in quite different situation. Trump is building the wall not to stop migrants from moving from Latin America to the USA, but to enable Mexico to hold back those fleeing back to Mexico when bloody and controlled chaos starts in the USA. There are lines of resistance which are built for Mexico to use them afterwards. But for Mexico to maintain the wall, it has to be an economically prosperous state. Accordingly, the war with gangs and economics development is taking place in Mexico now. Well, to a certain extent, as human resources are key, and Mexican human resources are not at all as talented and persevering as the ones we had in Russia after it had been destroyed. Russia managed to survive because of its people. There is no such stability in Mexico. That is why it is necessary to boost Mexico from outside for it to withstand and hold back those homonites who will swarm from the USA into Mexico. It will be the homonites who will flee in the first place. The gangs will flee because in Mexico life will be bright, warm and well fed. There is enough to rob and there is enough to live well. All those should be held back. That is what the wall is for.